Lisa. Happy National Scrapbooking Day. I have to admit that I'm cheating a little bit and I am doing this video. I am starting this on Wednesday night uh, because there's a lot of things going on around here and I don't know for sure how much time I'll have this week uh, to get things done. And I definitely want to get a video out on National Scrapbooking Day and I've decided to do a two page layout. Uh, for this one, I have several photos. Let's see what I'm doing. Six photos that were taken during our one snow of the year. And I know some of you were probably very, very upset if you were um, drowning in snow or covered up in snow all winter long or you didn't have any snow. But we get uh, here in the foothills of uh, the North Carolina mountains typically one about five or six inch snow a year. Now, you know, some years we don't have any. Some years we get a really big snow. But that's pretty much it and that's the typical thing and that's what happened this year it was kind of late in the season we were beginning to think it wasn't going to happen at all but because we get this one lovely snow we take pictures every year <laughs> and so i and I, this one tree i think has been photographed so many times in my album but i like my snow pictures and i like to get to do a snow kind of layout i don't though typically buy winter themed paper since i don't you know have a lot of pages around that so we're going to use some jelly prints now, I had originally planned to use these that I had in a video a while back. Uh, we, I made these as part of the video, and they use this um, snowflake stencil that I cut on the silhouette. They're pretty papers, but they don't, I hadn't printed the photos at that time, and they really don't go with the photos at all, in my opinion. So, I think I'd rather, this one's not too bad, but I think I would rather just redo them and I, and I can always cut this up and like use it for Christmas card bases uh, this winter so it won't go to waste. So I have my stencils here. I have this is the one I used for those that I'll use predominantly but I also have this one from uh, Hobby Lobby from back in the regular crafting area. So I have that and then I have a couple of other things. So we're going to do some jelly printing here in a few moments. The sketch has um, a photo um, the 8x10 papers is what I'll end up with with my size jelly print. One on each side of the two-page layout. And then a little bit of other paper and some snowflake designs. And I haven't decided... My plan when I drew this was to do die cuts for these, but I'm beginning to think I might want to maybe use some modeling paste or something here. I just I haven't decided. <clears throat> so we'll be doing some more fun things with those. Um, I might use a little pattern paper here. I've got, I need something for borders, but a lot of sort of handmade um, embellishment and paper uh, for this page. I'm looking at doing it on a white background because it was kind of the process of elimination. I did not have any gray paper um, that I liked, and I. I'd already pulled gray and silver paint uh, with a little blue and a little metallic here to do for my jelly printing. So I think the white background would be good. I could also do a black background. Um, I wish I had a real dark gray, but I don't. Um, I don't have two sheets of, of any. I need to go get stock up on some of my cardstock. Another thing I was thinking about, um, I thought about a black background. I also thought about doing my jelly printing on black with like some white. Um, um, paint. So I don't know. I'm going to be playing a little bit with that as well. So I think we could get some really interesting uh, contrast there. Or I could do a dark gray paper instead of black. I don't know. So we're going to do a little bit of playing with that. Now, in honor of National Scrapbooking Day, I do have a sale just for this weekend on one of my classes, and you can probably guess which one it is, but you'll find more information about that at the very end of the video. Um, it's a great class with lots of video. I go and I do my videos and my classes are more real time. I don't do the fast forward and voiceover for all of it. Um, I do uh, a lot more, they're longer and they just go into more uh, detail with lots of techniques as well as the particular subject matter. So check that out. Even if you don't catch the sale, um, it's still a good class and I, it's a self-paced thing. So I hope that you will uh, take advantage of that opportunity. Anyway, um, so my next thing here to do is to get the jelly plate out and to start doing some fun printing and seeing what I can come up with that looks good with these photos and really gets that fun snowflake kind of look. Now, if you're not into jelly printing, it will show you on the screen where you can fast forward to if you want to skip all of this process. It just it'll skip you to the point where I have the prints done. But I'm going to be using um, starting out with some gray paint here, a Liquitex paint. I'm not sure it matches the photos, so we'll just kind of have to see. Adding some silver from golden and a little bit of black, 
and then we'll be printing on white paper and I'm using a stencil uh, there was a background stencil or background design that I cut on the silhouette doesn't quite cover my 8x10 so I just rolled over that with a um, little thing that I got, foam thing that I got at Hobby Lobby, and that did not print well. Um, I don't know if I didn't press hard enough or what, but I'm going to have to try that. Again, the thing though is the color is not that great. It's really a little too brown. So I decided to um, use black and white and silver and to get my kind of grayish tone. And it's a little bit heavy on the, the darker tones there, but still I think that will be a little closer to the photo. And I'm going to press a little more firmly, roll over it, and that looks a whole lot better. Pretty dark though. It's pretty, but it's still not quite, I don't think, maybe the best color. We're going to work on that. And I clean the jelly plate and come back and we're going to try some of the um, gray and black cardstocks and see how they look using white metallic uh, paint from Anita's. I get that at Hobby Lobby. It's very inexpensive and it's really pretty. Add a little bit of silver tone to it. Oops, I smeared that uh, bottom there. Let's see what it looks like on black cardstock. And I got a lot of paint on here. So this is a very heavy coat of paint and I think it's beautiful and dramatic. And then I've got, um, I'm going to do the ghost print also on some black cardstock. This happens to be stamping up, but you could use any kind of cardstock you wanted. The ghost print didn't show the detail quite as much, I didn't feel like. I'm right, doing some whites. Did not put any black in this one or gray. We're going to be working on um, the gray paper this time. This is Stamping Up's Basic Gray cardstock. And I like that. I thought that was really pretty. And I know that Basic Gray color matches my photos. And I really like the ghost print there too. Now this time I did not clean the jelly plate. Sometimes you get some interesting looks doing that. And I'm doing a white on white. And that's pretty. Um, what I'm, the reason, one of the reasons I was doing that, that was to, I wanted to get another gray uh, background to see how it, that looked on the gray. Because I, I really like that. And I think that's going to be the, the one I'll probably end up with. But just in case, I'm <laughs> trying a few more things. Black paint. I'd forgotten all about the blue. There's some blue in those photos. So I'm going to add another layer, and I'm experimenting on one of the prints that I know I'm not going to use just to see how much of this comes through. The stencil there is a um, Snowflake stencil that I bought at Hobby Lobby in their craft department. It makes a pretty ghost print. Um, but that stencil, there's very little of the positive space of the stencil, meaning that there's very little design of it that's going to show through. So a lot of my background gets to show through. So when I lay that down, all that's going to actually print are those few little snowflakes. So now when I add this on top of one of my other prints, I just get some blue and black snowflakes on top of the white printed snowflakes I already had on the background. So let's look at some of the pages that we made and how they go with the background papers. Um, I really thought this was the wrong shade of gray, but it doesn't look too bad. It was the first uh, print that I did and has some silver in it and some of that gray uh, paint. I really love the, the black in terms of just the design itself, but it's a little too dramatic, I think, for these photos. So I think I'll have to save that for another project. The ones, let's see, this was one of those stamped off ones where I just sort of laid the stencil down and rolled over it. And I thought that was really pretty, but it wasn't quite uh, what I was going for. What? I've got some here with white backgrounds that were really pretty. And these were ones I did with some of the gray tones. And then I went over them a second time with that uh, Hobby Lobby stencil. And they're not bad. 
Those are really um, kind of pretty. I think I like this one the best. I'm going to set that aside. The ones I think I'm going to actually use, though, are these that were printed on the basic gray card color cardstock from Stampin' Up. Those are the ones I like the tone of them. I think they go with the the day because there was there before the sky you know came blue. It was a little bit grayer kind of day. I like that there that I added that extra layer with a little bit of blue and just the white on the dark background. I haven't really done that before um, with any of my jelly prints and, and my scrapbook pages. So I think I thought that was a, a pretty look. So I think I'm going to do those for my uh, different designs. And I also ended up with this one as one of the uh, second prints that I thought was really pretty. So I may do something with one or of the other of these for some of those secondary papers. So I'm going to trim these down and put them uh, together with the photos. So I am going to go with the white basil um, cardstock for the background. I've trimmed down these prints that I decided on. One of them still might need a little bit more trim trimming around the upper right hand corner and also position them to try to show as much of the snowflake as possible there there we go that upper right hand corner um is got too little too much gray on it and i'm still thinking about using some of the other prints in place of those little narrow strips on the side the papers are positioned so that one is lower than the other they don't exactly meet in the center or what's called the gutter of the paper I needed something for borders there, and I had this one pretty little white um, glittery border thing, um, but I'm going to end up using some washi tape to fill that out. But in looking for that, I found these pretty uh, stickers from KI, I think, that I've had for quite some time, and one of them says Simply Wonderful, and I think that's just really sweet and will look good on the page, and it's the right color. So I've glued their stuff on the right-hand page. I'm going to go ahead and get the left-hand page down here and get some washi tape. Sorry about my head. Um, I ended up with the gray and white stripe washi. I thought I had some silver, but I only had uh, gold. I didn't have a silver. That's something I'll have to look for. I have my journaling somewhere, too. I printed it out yesterday. My printer wasn't quite working so well, so it's really, really lightly printed. But um, anyway, we've got... The photos, I wanted to pop some of these up. I, when they were laying there, they curled a little bit, and they just look good popped up. So I decided to, to go ahead and use some stamping up dimensionals on the side. Let's see how this sticker is going to look over on the right-hand side. I did end up using the darker of the um, leftover prints there instead of the lighter colored one. And I'm ready to work on my snowflakes design. I'm picking out three spots for snowflakes. I have cut some on the silhouette. And my plan is to use the main snowflakes on the design, but underneath them to do some stenciling. And one of them tore. Um, so that I'm definitely not going to be able to use that one, but I don't think I like that design as well. I think I like the design of the other one because there's not so much lost in the middle of the other one. And you'll see what I mean here in just a moment. I'm going to use what's been uh, cut out from on the silhouette as my stencil. So I'll need to trim that down a little bit on that one side. We're going to start down there in the lower right-hand corner. And I'm using a product from Faber-Castell. This is a new product for them. It's a beautiful pearl uh, finish. It also comes, I think, in silver and gold. And I'll put the exact product on the screen. It's going too fast on <laughs> for an, in, and too small on my screen for me to see exactly what the product name is, but I'll put it up there so you can see it. It is very soft, and it does tend to go under this paper stencil a little bit. If I had a little bit um, more body to the medium or a little bit better stencil, I, that probably wouldn't happen. But it's going to be okay because we're going to cover these with some more snowflakes. And I get better at this and working with this particular medium as I get over to the third one. I don't have quite as much that, yeah, see there's some that drifts out underneath. And I can clean a little bit of that up. But again, it's not a big deal because we're going to add something, another layer to it. 
I wanted this because it has such a beautiful shine to it and it's something new. I've, I've had it a few months now but I haven't used it a whole lot. I think this is only the second project I've used it on. These are designed to be mixed like with your gelatos which I haven't done that yet but you can mix them with other things but they have wonderful shine. And that one comes out nice and clean. And then what we're going to put on the top of those, now that they're dry, are three silver snowflakes that I cut out of stamping up paper. And I cut them a little smaller than the one that I had used there as my stencil. And then just kind of make them offset a little bit. And it gives it a lot of layering. I just glued them in the center. And then I'm going to add a little rhinestone, rhinestone in the middle of each one. And that'll finish up the embellishments. So there's really nothing, there's, there's nothing like pre-printed embellishment except for that simply wonderful, no pattern paper. Everything is kind of handmade for this layout. Okay, so now we have our completed page. And let's go back to the sketch. Followed pretty closely. I moved the positions of these snowflakes based on my papers and, and some other things a little bit. And I didn't quite uh, take this all the way out as far as I had planned, but I think it balances uh, really well from one side to the other. So we've got to do our jelly print paper, and there is some lovely shine to that with a little bit of silver paint that I added. Not tons, but there's, there's some silver and that white um, metallic paint was also on that. And then these snowflakes that are part of that Faber-Castell pearl product as well as um, the die cuts and the silver stamping up paper. Popped up a couple of photos. Got to use some stickers here. And I like how this is like almost smudged, but it just, I, I don't know, I think it just has a really pretty texture to it. So that's our two page layout. Um, if you're watching this on National Scrapbooking Weekend, there is a sale going on for my two-page terrific class. You'll find out at the end of the video there'll be details about that. And if you don't happen to be catching this during the sale time, it's still a good class and it's still a good buy for the number of hours of video that you get and the, the handouts and everything. It's, there's a lot of material there. So, And you'll find this sketch over on my blog. And there are sketches that go in that class as well for two-page layouts. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope you have a wonderful National Scrapbooking Day.